All right, Joel, um, thanks for uh, getting this together. And it's a little bit timely. What are we, eight days out from your event in downtown Tucker, right? Yes, if my math serves me, my mom was a math teacher, so I want to make sure I get that math right. But yes, November 20th, Saturday at 7 p.m. at High Card and Blue Tart Brewing downtown Tucker, we are bringing a Friendsgiving comedy party, baby. Yeah, I, I hated math, uh, yeah. but I do <laughs> IT. So I, I did computer science and math scared me. So did I, and then I did IT. So um, yeah. There's no you. math in IT? Shh. <laughs> I guess if you do it right, you didn't say you were good at IT. You just said you do IT. Well, I, I look good on TV and, you know, what, what is it? You know, I play doctor on TV and all that. So, right, 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 right. So, you know, that, that's how that goes. So, so um, tell us about you, Joel. Uh, are you native Atlanta? I, I ask that a lot. Yeah, I'm native to Georgia. Me I was too. born in Somerville, Georgia, and then moved to Dallas, Georgia, and now I live in Tucker, Georgia. So native to Georgia, uh, but just it's kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies getting closer and closer to the big city. You know, that's basically right. what it's been. So I'm, I'm going to spell the city that I'm from and I have a reason for this. A-L-B-A-N-Y. How do you say that? A-L. Oh, say oh sorry. A-L-B-A-N-Y. Oh, OK. So it's I say Albany. Me too. Okay. It, some people say Albany though, right? I, I don't like that. And I, I've never said it that way, but it's, it's kind of like hot Lana. Nobody calls it hot Lana. And, mm -hmm. and I've, I've never called it Albany either, but <laughs> that, that's where I was born in Albany. So yeah, there's, um, in my hometown of, uh, Somerville, when, if you're from there, it's pronounced Saville. Oh, like you spell it Somerville, but the accent up there, it's just all redneck Tourette's. They just <laughs> sub, subble. We from subble. Well, then in the south of there, you got Mayretta. Mayretta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to college in East Tennessee at Maryville College. Yeah. But up there, it's pronounced Morville. Oh, God. M-U-R-V-U-L. There was merch and everything. Like they really leaned into it. So, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and I don't know where I got this accent. I, I have a Southern draw, but it, I feel like there are people that have stronger Southern draws than you and I. Yeah. Yeah. I never realized I had an accent until like I went up, I visited up North and like, in like Boston. And they were like, Oh, you have a thick Southern accent. And I was like, you should hear my family. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, dude, you should see, you should see, there's this new show on Netflix called Swap Shop, mm. and it's, it's based in East Tennessee, it's like a bunch of like, basically just antiquers that like look for deals, essentially, but the characters on there, and the accents, like, my wife is from East Tennessee, and her whole side of the family is horrified <laughs> at this being out in public, they're like, oh no! It's all right. So, so I went to Billy Bob's. You know where Billy Bob's here is in Tucker? Billy Bob's. Oh God. So it's it's Ooh. like one of the classic dive bars here in Tucker. And so oh, no. I heard this joke, I've got to tell you. And, okay. and, you're, and you're a comedian. This is what your professional job is, right? Right. So you go to Winder to Finder, Decatur to Dater, mm -hmm. and Tucker to Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a clean comic. I'm a clean comic. <laughs> uh, you trying to get me canceled on here, Robert? <laughs> no, I'm going to, again, say I heard this in one of Tokel, excuse me, Tucker's classic, you know, dive bars. So if you're going to do a comedy show in downtown Tucker, this is what you need to be prepared for, Joel. I didn't realize that's what they meant by Tucker together. I did not realize... <laughs> Oh, maybe that's what it is. I went to Tucker to together. Maybe that means and they got married happily ever after. Hey, hey okay. there, you go. Yeah. there we go. See, I really buttoned that up. <laughs> and it's not even the Lord's Day yet. So <sighs> this, this Friday. So, yeah, very nice. All right. So how, how in the world did you get started doing all this? Well, I've been doing comedy since February 1st, 2010. I was about to graduate from college and realized I had nothing to lose. Sally Mae took it all. So I said, hey, let me try this comedy thing I've been wanting to try my entire life. 
So I went to an open mic. And then from then on, I was like, I'm a comedian. Everything I do is in pursuit of that. So whether that's when I was working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, I was doing working all day and then doing shows all night, washing dishes, waiting tables, refilling mini bars, like whatever it took for me to continue to pursue comedy has been been my entire life's mission since I did it. So I've in that time, you know, I've produced my own tours. I produced my own comedy special called The Trophy Husband that's available on my website. And then now, pre-pandemic, I was on the road a lot, and I was getting a lot of gigs going, but then post-pandemic, I was like, you know, I really, I really like being home, and I really like, um, it's cool to go out on the road, which I'll continue to do, but I wanted to start bringing comedy to cities that don't really have it, you know, because comedy, I think we need comedy now more than ever, and laughter connects people better than anything else. And I really do believe cities like Tucker, me living here, I had a personal connection to wanting to produce a show here, which we've now been doing for a few months now. And then now I also do one in like Norcross as well. So I'm really looking to start creating comedy events around the Metro Atlanta, really in the OTP. You know, I'm trying to, you know, we're trying to bring some OTP comedy, all these ITPers and their, you know, their comedy i want i want to bring it out to these towns that are vibrant like tucker tucker has so many great things going on and i'm so excited to be living here at this time where it is seemingly uh like having a lot of positive momentum a lot of even on the development side they just announced they're gonna like create this entertainment district they just announced mm. like this open container law as well like there's a movie being filmed here right now so oh there's lots of movies here yeah there's a lot of awesome things happening in tucker and uh, I want this comedy show to be a place for the whole community to come together. I'm glad you mentioned that. So Jason, our friend at Radio Tucker, he yeah. actually, uh, Mr. Matthew Lee posted this. And I'm going to paraphrase because I don't want to get too boring here. But here's, yeah. this is how that's going to go down. Oh, there was I, the accent. I just heard the accent right there. Oh, did that it was, come out of me? Yeah, <laughs> here's how it's going to go down. Yeah, I thought sorry. I was talking to my uncle for a second. <laughs> um, if you buy a drink, Contain alcohol from a business uh -huh. within the approved area, which is downtown Tucker. You can leave the area and consume the drink in the right of way, meaning you can walk down the sidewalk or sit on the bench and the drink you purchased inside. But there are restrictions. It's not BYOB. You cannot sit on the bench with the brown bag and drink a bottle of Mad Dog you picked up from a liquor store or something you purchased from a nearby gas station. Have you heard this yet? Oh, yeah, this was in Tucker Town Talk, right? Yes. Yeah, that was part of a thread. I actually posted a meme mm -hmm. of, I posted a meme of like all these exciting announcements happening. It's like a funny comedy meme. Yeah. But then people went crazy about this open container thing. And Matthew came in and like shared some clarity on exactly what the parameters are. Mm, yeah. So um, only drinks purchased in the district from those licensed to sell the alcohol only during the limited hours you can't dr nurse that drink on the bench till 1 a.m yeah 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 it said 10 p.m right yeah oh uh, well mr lee says 1 a.m um oh, oh i thought it the, i thought it ended at 10 p.m i thought is what oh like, okay then you may for. be correct because mr lee says you can't be on that bench to 1 a.m mm-hmm mm. Now, this does not include private property. For example, it doesn't mean if you buy a beer from Village Burger and tailgate in the Bank of America parking lot, you can't do that either. So it's basically you can be at the local seven and any restaurant or brewery and walk across the street to meet someone and be able to take your drink back with you. But I, I thought that's what open container law was in general like i didn't think open container meant you can just bring a six pack and sit on a park bench i thought open container meant like you you can kind of like go from place to place just holding alcohol you've been buying in the city i didn't i didn't think that it would be interpreted as oh so people are just going to bring a keg and hang out on the railroad tracks but i guess well, it's I, I wouldn't i wouldn't be on the railroad tracks i'd be <laughs> But, but I, I mean, hey, it's it's anything that like hopefully that drives people to come back downtown, because I know a lot of people are still a, a little hesitant to get out and about, which is totally understandable and fine if they're not comfortable with it. But if people have been thinking about it, I'm, hopefully this is like an incentive to be like, hey, you know, Tucker, 
in my opinion. I'm interested to hear other people's opinions, though, because I actually went down to the farmer's market yesterday and was asking some people what they thought about it. And I posted it in Tucker Town Talk and on my own social media um, just to get a pulse on people's response, because it seems like Tucker is like there's a more established, older Tucker and there's like this newer, younger Tucker moving in because mm -hmm. I see it in my own neighborhood mm -hmm. where I, my wife and I've been here for five years. And like our neighbors have been replaced by like younger couples, you know, and we're starting to see that around the neighborhood. So I'd be interested to see each kind of each demographics opinion on this. But the whole goal with my comedy show is that we can all come together there and just yeah. laugh and let go, you know, because there do seem to be kind of two different communities building right now. And I'd, I'd like a place for us to come together and just realize, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we're all, I mean, we all, everybody likes to laugh, you know, as they say, Tucker together. Yeah. Well, our friends to the South in Avondale, have you been out Avondale by chance? I have been to Avondale. Yeah. Yeah. So they have this already. And my, Ooh. my, my friends down there at the beer growler, we'll, just, we'll have to go down there at some point. Yeah. And I, I didn't get a chance because I got an electrician working in the house today, but our friends down at the beer growler, they have an approved Avondale city cup. And if you put your beverage in the said approved city cup in the city of Avondale, you can take that drink to the next place oh. in their entertainment district. So um, that's how the city of Avondale. Also, the other interesting thing, just to point out, city of Avondale has their own police force. Us up here in Tucker, we use DeKalb PD. So we shall see. What do you what do you think about it, Robert? Oh, I think it's a great idea. But oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I actually was going to take a tour home from dinner last night down Main Street and the movie industry shut it down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then all these people freaking out that whatever. But, you know, hey, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, there'll be more events on Main Street. And uh, yeah. It's, I think it's a, I think it's a big step. You know, I, I'm excited about it, you know, and everyone I talked to at the farmer's market was excited about it. Most of them hadn't even heard of it. Yeah. Had heard about it yet. Cause it did just happen. But, um, well, yeah, it won't I'm, go into effect to January, I think. So I got about two months. So. Yeah. That, I think that's what I read as well. Yeah. Those, don't be months. getting those mad dogs yet. You got hold off. Hold on. That would immediately goes to that. I was like, oh, this is cool. People can like walk around and hang out. And they're like, there's going to be people just passed out on park benches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the disclaimer, Joel and Robert said, wait till January. I get that oh. on the record, Joel. Yes, I'm on the record saying <laughs> wait till whatever the legal parameters are. <laughs> um, I don't want them to be I'm like, not bailing you out of jail. The comedian said, and they're like, well, there's your first problem. I'm not I bailing think. you out of jail. <laughs> That's interesting to hear smaller towns. This is water, by the way. So. Oh, if you were just starting to drink now. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to see other uh, like smaller towns uh, starting to do this. You know, I didn't I didn't realize I didn't really pay attention. I don't really pay attention to politics really much at all. But um, hearing this in Tucker and then now hearing other towns starting to do this, I think I think with like the pandemic really made people appreciate not living in a big city and appreciate community and the value of just having a local community and just not trying to like, you know, the rat race or whatnot, but really focusing on values and what's most important. It's been really cool to be a part of a community like Tucker who really seems to be embracing that in a very proactive way, you know? Yeah. So we shall see. We shall see. We, I guess, I guess we shall see. Yeah. We, that time will tell, but I like any, I, I just appreciate the city. Um, even putting in the thought of like, okay, how can we start to create opportunities to really cultivate that community, you know, and really bring people together. So you never know with people what's going to happen because people are people, but, um, I'm optimistic. I'll say. Yeah. That, that's the song. People are people. What was that? Depeche Mode, somebody, but anyway. Oh, I don't know. I have to look that one up. But so, <laughs> so tell us a joke, Joel. You, you are the comedian here. Tell us a joke. Oh, you, <laughs> you mean beside you your shirt? Um, oh, oh. I own oh, it's. I actually like your shirt. J Jason just slapped you though. But, yeah. Anytime someone like when I'm out at like a family event or out at an event and they're like, tell me a joke. I mean, that's my, always my go-to. I always just roast their shirt. So it's not you, Robert. I actually like your radio Tucker music. Festival. Yeah. We're just going to end right now. Yeah. 
I think my favorite, my favorite joke uh, that I've written is I married a woman with tattoos because she's comfortable with permanent mistakes. But you didn't laugh. You just nodded as if you're my dad disappointed that that's what I'm using my liberal arts degree for. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's what sally may paid for uh, actually yeah, what what, what was your degree in is it just liberal arts uh organizational management hey you can manage people in a minor in economics flex it, how, how did that work out for you well i'm doing comedy so <laughs> oh that that is your day job oh yeah yeah, I'm, yeah i've been doing comedy almost 12 years now and oh, okay. i've been a professional probably since about eight years in. Um, I think I took the leap about eight years in. Yeah. To make okay. it my full-time job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, so the, so the come out to my show, everyone. So my <laughs> wife doesn't make me get a real job. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Um, so, <laughs> um, so all these gigs, you said local here in Atlanta, are you flying out from the ATL at all or? Oh, for like my road gigs or like and, yeah, you you flying to Tucker? Well, I mean, I guess you could like <laughs> do a, you know, fly over to downtown. Um, sure. I mean, I've flown, I've flown to some gigs. I mean, you know, I've, I've performed as far as Japan, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've flown to gigs for sure. A lot of them I drive to, you know, like they're, they're more local. I mean, Virginia and Florida and Alabama and oh, so heck, can, you know, so, so compare. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. So compare a show in Alabama. Where in where in Alabama? Oh my gosh! Oh, I performed everywhere in Alabama. Um, oh dear, here we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Huntsville, Montgomery, um, where Mobile or Mobile? wherever you're from, wherever they, you're they call it that I always said mobile, mobile, mobile. I don't know. You know, some people, you know, tomato ketchup, you know, people don't know what they want to say. So, uh, so a year ago we, we went down to Destin and we yeah. drove through Alabama mm -hmm. and <laughs> their idea of a gas station. And some of these rural parts is there's a porta potty out front. The, the front door's locked. And they said, swipe your card. And I think there may have been a phone number to call if there's an emergency. Oh, my. There, there wasn't nobody inside. Oh, whoa. I just performed in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, which is not far from uh, Destin. And they called it L.A. It's called Lower Alabama. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. But I love being on the road and I love meeting people and just, you know, coming from a small town. I, I gravitate towards just getting to meet just characters of all walks of life. You know, I really, I just, I like to connect with people through my comedy and telling my story. And it, it's amazing just how authenticity can really like translate to people that may have zero to kind of relate to you with in terms of their background versus yours. But there is something about that human connection that comedy can really bring, which I'm finding now more than ever, and it's so rewarding to get out on the road and be able to spread that. So you said Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So compare that Alabama experience to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was, I, I performed on a military base oh, in okay. Japan, um, which was hilarious because everyone there was like, you've got to try McDonald's. That's all they said. It was like all, all <laughs> on the military base. Cause we basically flew. I didn't get to do anything touristy. We like flew in did the show that night and then left like the following morning. They kind of drove us around town in, uh, in the morning before our flight, but, and went to like a few stores just to experience it, but we didn't get to really do anything touristy. Um, so it was on a military base. So it wasn't, I guess, as jarring as you may think it was, as you may think it may be. Uh, the flight was much more jarring. I think it was like, well, did you fly military, I guess? No, they we flew just like normal. Uh, um, Delta Comfort, though, uh, not to brag. Um, yeah, they didn't put us on in the cargo with like a couple like jeeps or anything. We got to sit in seats, so gotcha. it was it was a comfortable trip. It was definitely one of those career milestones of just like where comedy can take you that you never expect. Like, oh man, these jokes took me to Japan. <laughs> you know, you just 
you just never know. You <laughs> so, know, it's so cool. So, so do you do you remember? I, I'm thinking you're maybe a little bit younger than me, but you don't have to answer that question. But I'm 33. Yeah, you're a little bit younger than me. Um, but do you remember Singfred and Roy? The the tiger people? Yes. Yes. So before that crazy ass Tiger King, the, is he in jail right now? Oh, I don't know. I never watched it. I refused. Uh, yeah, I, I don't blame you. So Siegfried and Roy, they're no longer with us. They passed away. But there was a documentary because mom and I went to Vegas right oh. before COVID. And then we went to Vegas just last month and went to Mirage. And we went to the Siegfried and Roy. They, they have like a place right behind Mirage. So you're in the middle of the strip. You're seeing the tigers. You're seeing dolphins. But you're in the middle of the strip. And so I, was, I remember Siegfried and Roy but I didn't delve into their whole story. But part of the documentary that I watched, which is why you said Japan, they did a show in Japan. And so it was quite a uh, experience just to watch their, uh, their show in Japan. Um, but the, the, they were quite the showmen. If you oh, ever want to check them out. Per performers to the highest degree. Yeah. That's why they were so, so successful. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. So let, let's plug your show again, November 20th in Tucker, downtown. Yes. H have you, it's at High Card and Blue Tart Brewing. Have you been there? Next door. I have not made it back there yet. It's so, people don't know they exist. Like anytime I tell someone, they're like, oh, where's that? I was like, it's behind Local 7. Anytime I say behind Local 7, they're like, oh yeah, or behind Hot Petties. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I mean, they opened up right before the pandemic essentially like not long before the pandemic you know and um it's like two breweries that work together and uh, i mean they're just so cool you know it's, they're just so cool and they they love tucker and they really want it to become like a hub for the community you know and comedy just fits right in there and they're they're both funny guys themselves like you can follow them on social media they post a lot of funny things and i uh, just me living in tucker i thought it'd be just a natural fit just to produce a comedy show in downtown Tucker and who doesn't like comedy and then who doesn't like beer on top of that so each beer uh each ticket you get includes a free beer as well and it's been so fun just to do a comedy show but then also just to meet people here in Tucker fellow Tuckerites you uh, know so, so so my Tucker story I should actually clarify we had been coming to Tucker for over a decade so actually our roommate, we met at a poker game. The building right now is vacant because our city wouldn't let, well, I'll just go and say it. I call Chick-fil-A Jesus chicken. Jesus but, chicken. So, you know, the Jesus chicken right Holy near the Publix, you yeah, know, the, they mm. want to move down to that vacant place that was um, the, the barbecue place. And In downtown? No, this is right down Hugh Howell. Oh, the big, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But Greater a decade Greater. ago, that was a bar called Stage Door. And that's okay. where we all kind of met our circle of friends literally a decade ago. Wow. And we played poker. And we have followed that circle of friends ever since. Um, and I'm going to disclaim this. Um, we had nothing to do with it, but we have burned two places down since. Um, we have shut down a bar too along the way. Oh dear. Yeah, no. And Am I an um, accessory being on this show right now? Am I gonna get a call? No. <laughs> um well, I'm saying it that way, but we had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And um <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> and so now we are presently looking for a new home for our poker games. Ooh. So but we first warn, you know, the owner of the establishment, make sure your insurance is paid up because, you know, we don't have a great track record here. So <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so finally, this year, we moved to Tucker. We, we found the right place. We sold our place in Mayretta and we are here. And uh, our roommate, um, you know, we, we've known my roommate actually worked with my dad and all Benny eons. Ago. Wow. So that's how this all crazy connection comes together. So um, I guess we've been Tucker rides a little bit longer than you, but yeah, that's... just a little bit, but it's, it's, it's still, it's still cool to hear people's origin stories. You know, right. it's like right. my wife and I met in college and then uh, we, we kind of stayed in touch. We were just like, you know, we were fun and we were friends. Like we had classes together. She was a business international business major and such. And then afterwards we we're like, Oh, that was kind of fun. So then we can't went and visited each other a few times and then, 
talked about moving down here. She's like, what if I moved down? And then from there, we lived together in Sandy Springs for a little while. And then when we were looking for a home, uh, Tucker was just the perfect, the perfect uh, fit for us. So, yeah, we, we love Tucker. It's always cool to see how people get here, you know. Yeah. But a fun, a fun fact about High Card, High Card is actually a reference to, like, poker. Like, I think their slogan is, like, a winning hand always holds a high card. So it's like their logo is like four aces. It's like, so it, it's, it's a perfect place to play cards for sure. Yeah. I'm going to make sure their insurance is paid up. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Talk to Alan. <laughs> See, um, he'll be the guy with the long hair when you walk in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun. Cool. All right. And so after that, um, December 11th, so you have seen the calendar and um, we are dads against deplorables mm -hmm. and I, I want to know your reaction. Uh, the straight married guy. Are you a dad though? No, 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 no. Okay. But I mean, imagine... I didn't mean to say it like that, but no. <laughs> so if you showed that calendar to your dad, what do you think his reaction would be? He would say deplorable for sure. He, he would, he would say these look like dads for deplorable. Oh, um, just, I mean, no, just looking at the images. I mean, come on. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> what do you think a dad would say about these images? <laughs> uh, those dads would, but these dads. there is a very different, and I, we don't have to go into it now, but there is a very different answer for a very different demographic to that question. I'll just oh. leave it at that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I would just say for myself, you know, I don't think this will be making it into the buyer's household <laughs> calendar. <laughs> Um, but I always, um, what I, I always enjoy seeing people like have an, I have an idea and then actually see it all the way through. I feel like all of us have all these ideas of like, Oh, I want to do that. Or I should do this. I've always wanted to attempt X, Y, and Z. And then most of us, the idea stops there. You know, it's like, we see the idea. Or maybe we start to try it out and then we're like, oh, that was hard. And I thought, who cares? You know, so I always enjoy seeing people. And this is probably the comedian in me who and I, I have a podcast called Hot Breath, where I've interviewed over 400 comics about comedy. And there's just this there's just this drive of like, these are my thoughts. I'm going to go on stage night after night after night after night after night, willing to fail at the attempt of creating a funny joke that people can enjoy, you know, and I love, I think from that experience of the comedy creative process, just seeing people, Oh, maybe we should create a calendar, but to, for all of you, you have an idea, but then for all of you to collaborate and everyone actually execute and fulfill their obligations, especially working with several people, you never know just who's going to fall off or they say, never mind, you know? So regardless of what it is, I'm always inspired to see people, even if there is newly involved, um, you know, uh, take that with what you will. Uh, I'm not endorsing this. There won't be a Joel Byers affiliate code for this. <laughs> but um, I guess I say all that to say, you know, it's, it's just cool. I love seeing people collaborative and also love seeing people who have an idea and they actually see it all the way through. It's just so rare for people to like actually put in step one to step final and actually complete a project, you know? So kudos to you, not deplorable dads. I won't call you deplorable. Um, I'll let the comment section do that for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I, I, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what it is about that. I mean, my parents were educators. So maybe it's just that, maybe I just have that in my genetics of just like liking to see people actually have an idea and see it all the way through, you know, yeah. even if the clothes are see-through. Um, yeah. Thanks. I that turned uh, to a sentimental moment there, Robert. I was like, see, it's nice. You guys actually did something. I was sending you bear hugs, Mr. Uh, not, <laughs> not, hugs. not dad, Joel Byers, <laughs> not bear deplorable hugs. dad. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so oh, um, to plug my event after your yeah. event, December 11th, is that Pearl Harbor day? I have no idea. It's a Saturday, it's cool. though. Yeah, Saturday, December 11th at Wolf's in Midtown. 
my uh, good friend that uh, runs that place is going to let us have a calendar release party. And uh, awesome. if you are welcome to come down and have, they do more than beer down at Wolf's. So uh, if you want to uh, come down and join us. Woof. Yes. Woof, woof. And woof. there should be some football games. That's a Saturday. Is that, that's before college football ends, right? Because Wolf's is a sports bar. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't keep up with sports that much. Um, That's yeah, not I very dad, Joel. So. I know, but I'm not a dad. You know, I just have a dog. Uh, oh, so. That's a dad. That's a, yeah, I'll take it. You know, whatever keeps my wife not wanting kids is what I'll do. Oh, you know? I don't blame so you there. If, if it's I, a dog, I have no kids, throw yeah. that decoy up there. <laughs> my, my, my dad's not happy about that. That There's not going to be a Robert the Fifth, but yeah. So. <laughs> I it's I yeah I don't I mean we I I'm I don't know I mean we've talked about it <laughs> literally like, when I said that my mom texted me too by the way but I go no that's perfect timing <laughs> you know like my my wife and I kind of agreed on the whole kid thing that like you know we just we can't afford kids you know not till we have they are not data. cheap you the know dog is we a only whole have lot 10 cheaper. gigs a month of data you can't raise a kid on that because the iPad's the pacifier. You're just, oh, here, Timmy, Google happy, you know, so. It's true. Very true. Dogs are yeah. cheaper than kids, yes. For sure. Yeah, unless you clean your dog's teeth. We got a quote with dog teeth cleaning. It was a couple hundred. I was like, how much to kill it? Goodness. I mean, you know, I mean, the dog, we bought him used, you know. I don't know. Don't kill the dog. No. No, it was. I'm running bits now, Robert. I'm uh, squeezing them in at the end here. I'm starting to shoehorn some bits uh, in. Uh, they're, People, look, I they're, am funny. They're, they're going to yank you off the camera. <laughs> Probably listening in the other room. Like the ASPCA. Whew. I performed on an ASPCA fundraiser and did and did that joke. And they were all like, really? Here? Yeah. <laughs> but it was after, like, I had been up there for like 30 minutes. Like, it was after we were having fun. So it wasn't like, it was kind of like a wink, wink. It wasn't like, they knew I wasn't serious. <laughs> But we'll do comedy anywhere. Like, I mean, as a comedian, like you see people see Netflix specials and they're like, oh, that's comedy. And you're mm. like, that's the I one. I have the perfect person. place for you. Have you been to the Popeyes at Brit Road? For do you comedy? know where that is? Popeyes, the chicken place? Yes. Is that, did you really just go, I have the perfect place for you? Have you been to that fast food restaurant on that road you've never heard of? Yes. Well, they pay um, you in cholesterol and it is a great gig um the last time i went there there was a very unhappy co uh, worker there excuse me i don't work at popeyes excuse me let me say she worked at popeyes and she was uh -huh. extremely unhappy about her paycheck and she Ooh. was screaming four letter words at all the staff and management there literally they were unable to work they were like frozen in time and I, I called the police i was like this is insane and so the the cab popo answered uh, where are you honey i said i'm at the <laughs> i'm at the popeyes near Britt road she goes and what's going on i said you can't hear her on the phone she goes oh uh well they're already en route honey so yeah um imagine you being and you know just like just being like a news reporter as this is all going down oh i would be filming for sure yeah I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going viral one way or another i'll just hold myself up in the middle like reporting looky here <laughs> what why are popeyes such hot messes i dude i live next to a popeyes like uh on the come up when i was a hotel mini bar attendant not to brag but <laughs> I would refill mini bars and I, I lived on Boulevard. If mm. anybody knows Boulevard, oh, yes. this is this is pre Pont City Market yes. as well. Like Pont City pre, Market is open. Pre gentrification. Now. This was pre I was like on the front lines of gentrification. They're like, throw in the honky. Like he he's <laughs> he's from the trailers. He can handle the trap, you know. So I was on the front lines. Um, I got a lot of good material out of it, but like this was back when Boulevard had a rap song about it. It it was it was so you've fun. heard murder kroger too then i have heard murder kroger yeah, yeah. yeah but i lived right next to a popeyes and um i remember i only had this issue once but uh there was like a, there was like a rat situation i was living in a studio apartment in the basement of this building right next to popeyes and when i reached out to the landlord 
she was like, oh, they all they come from the Popeyes every now and then. And I was like, oh, OK, is that what they're serving over there? So I'm very familiar with Popeyes. <laughs> I so, fall asleep to that scent every night oh, God. as a famous comedian. Uh, so I have to quote Jason, our friend on Radio Tucker. He said it's part of it's kind of like a Waffle House. It's part of the ambiance. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and it's like a cultural thing. Yeah. But, um, you know, either way, the food is going to be consistently just brown, nothing green, just all I think they do have green beans. I think they have green beans. Oh, that's OK. Popeye really rebranded, though, didn't he? He went from cans of spinach to fried chicken. He really now is Megan the Stallion. You know, Megan. Oh, I saw that the hottie sauce. I saw that. Good for her. Right. Getting that. If you check. can get it, you got to wait in that long line that Good wraps around her. the building five times. But you'll you'll get that hottie sauce eventually, I guess. Hey, and anyone out there in Tucker looking for a brand ambassador, holla at your boy. All right. You know, my wife would be so grateful for me to have a reason to get out of the house and leave her alone. So anyone looking for a brand ambassador, you know, or want to sponsor the comedy show, holla at your boy. All proceeds will go to the Sally Mae Foundation. So we appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, the, those loans have not been forgiven. yet. So. It's all good. You know, I'm, what I mean, the government's not paying theirs. What am I going to pay mine right. back? You know, student debt's over a trillion dollars. She can't catch us all. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's let's plug it again. November let's 20th and Tucker. We're at iCard. No? Did I get that wrong? No, you did, but it that was just great. Like, all right, uh November 20th. Where is it at? High card. I don't know. It was just it was just funny. No, I appreciate you having me on to promote it. Yeah, it's downtown Tucker behind Local 7 and Hot Betty's. There's High Card and Blue Tart Brewing. It's a local brewery. Come together. Let's do it, Tucker. I'm bringing some of the funniest comics around. And I'm bringing. Oh, it's more deep. than you. Oh, yeah. It's a whole lineup. Oh, we and didn't the, talk about them. The best part is uh, Atlanta has like the hottest comedy scene in the country right now. And I've been this in the This is scene. like a whole other segment. You can talk about them. Well, we were talking about the show. I didn't get into the detail, I guess. You know, we got we got sidetracked on your calendar. Oh, for two, all of two minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> dad, not dad, Joel. <laughs> no, it's, it's such an amazing lineup. I mean, that I, I'm, I'm super excited to bring really some of the funniest comics in the city. People like just like the movie industry is here. You know, a lot of the talent is moving here. A lot of comedians are moving to Atlanta for the opportunities. So there's so many hilarious comics that I get to bring into Tucker that are professionals that will really put on a good show. And this time for Friendsgiving, I am bringing in my favorite local DJ. His name's DJ D. Mark. We met at a comedy show years ago, and I've been trying to find an opportunity to bring him over here. So it's going to be like it's going to be a comedy party. Like it's the first beer is on the house. Just get a ticket, tuckercomedy.eventbrite.com. And I'll be there hosting. We'll be having some fun games and some giveaways and such. So I really want it to be like a comedy party. You know, I live in Tucker. I love Tucker and believe in the potential of Tucker and want this show to become kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, a town square that we can do every month just to come together and let go and laugh. But as we disclaim, you cannot take the beer away from High Card yet. Yet, yeah. But you won't want to leave because these this show is going to be turnt. Allegedly, you would say. And the show is also at seven, as well. So it's early enough for you to get home and you know put on your pajamas and finish your housewives season before uh, you pass out. Because I don't, I don't want to be out late. Housewives either. is still on. Huh. Housewives is definitely still on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just ask oh. my wife. Hmm. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a seven o'clock show. You know, I like, to, I like to get in and out. You know, I like to put on a good show and then leave you wanting more. I'm not going to drag it out to like nine or ten. Like, I, I really want it to be like a fun comedy party for us to just come together and let go and laugh. So I hope to see you there. Each show has been awesome. And I, I want to see more and more of you out there. And let's, uh, 
as they say, tucker together. And what better way to come together than with laughter? There's a Ooh. song about that too, come together right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. And one more time, December 11th at Wolf's, further down in that city of Atlanta. Woo. Dad's against deplorables. So nice. Thanks for having me, Robert. Yeah. And good luck. And uh, yeah, enjoy this weather. Are you a summer guy, fall guy, winter guy? What's your favorite? I, I, I like fall. I like the colors. Yeah. I, I, like, I love I like the, the colors. This is like perfect weather right now. Yeah, I don't like the leaves though. I oh, yeah. the leaves are here and like it's kind of like winter is coming. No, the leaves are coming. <laughs> you know, so um yeah, we we had the, the yard guy come and help and it's like you didn't even come yet. So that's why I just wait. I honestly I like let them just pile up and then when they're all done, then I take care of it. Yeah. Like it just yeah. All right. <laughs> Have a good weekend and uh thank you. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>